Welcome back for another Waterfowl Wednesday, and today we're going to be covering decoy spreads for ducks over water. I figured the easiest way to do this would be to use a whiteboard, but I think it'll still work. We're kind of close, but it'll be alright. When I hunt ducks over water, I generally just run a dozen decoys, unless I'm hunting with other people and they bring some decoys. Because one, I don't want to carry in more than a dozen decoys because that, that just gets heavy. And two, you can get the job done with just a dozen decoys. On farm ponds, dozen decoys work great. And small marshes, dozen decoys. Even on lakes, I've hunted on a lake with a dozen decoys and I've killed birds. So, you know, it, 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 it slow down, Josh. You had too much coffee this morning. It doesn't necessarily take a large amount of decoys to kill birds. It just takes some decoys and being in the right spot and, you know, having the perfect decoy spread is not going to make it so then you kill birds. It's you doing your scouting and setting the decoys right and calling the birds in and just doing everything that revolves around duck hunting in the right way. So a common misconception is that your decoy spread is the be all end all. If you do it wrong, you're not going to kill any birds, which is not true because I've killed birds in horrible decoy spreads and I've killed birds in really awesome looking decoy spreads. And it just comes down to scouting. If you scout and you do your homework, you figure out where the birds go and you just throw some decoys out there, you're going to get birds to come in because you did your homework. Now, if you don't do your homework and you don't scout and you don't find where the birds go, you're going to have a harder time. And so, you know, a lot of people look over the scouting part and they just jump right into the decoy spread. Oh, we need to set these two decoys facing this way and this one needs to have its butt up in the air and this one needs to be attached at the butt with the weight on the butt side and this one needs to have the weight on the front side. And it, 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 that's not what it comes down to. And you know, that's some great tips and techniques for maybe having your decoy spread look a little bit different than other people in like a public scenario, but it just comes down to scouting. And if you scout right, you're gonna kill birds. So here are, I'm gonna go over some decoy spreads here that I use over water when I'm hunting ducks. So this can, I'll go over like a pond and I'll go over a marsh and I'll go over a lake. Cause they're a little bit different, but they're all basically the same. And the biggest thing that I can stress is the wind. And when you're hunting ducks, you can either have the wind at your back or at your side, you don't want it coming at you. So, let's see here. I'll angle this down. Okay, cool. So, let's say we'll go over a pond first. So, here's a little farm pond, right? And let's say the wind is coming that way. Okay. So, now... We want to set up, if possible, right here. Okay, so you're gonna have people, you're either building a blind or you have your layout blinds, one, two, three, four, and you're facing the way the wind is blowing towards. So you're gonna have the wind at your back. Now, let's say you only have a dozen decoys. What do you do here? Well, what I like to do is just your basic horseshoe and just, put my decoys out like this, kind of like right along the bank, nothing special. So we got three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So that is one of my go-to decoy spreads. When did your back, you got the horseshoe, the birds are going to land right there. So if you do everything right, that's where the birds are going to go. And <laughs> this is a very small pond if that's a dozen decoys but I've hunted in a pond about like that with a dozen decoys and we shot our limit in 30 minutes so it's 30 minute limit a bunch of teal that was awesome that was a great hunt so when did your back that's what we're gonna do now let's say you're hunting a crosswind and this is when people kind of get confused a crosswind is when the wind is coming here, but you can't get on this side of the pond. Maybe there's um, 
a fence right here something's blocking you off so where you can't hunt on this side so you can either hunt on this side or you can hunt on this side I need to start holding this up more because there's a glare but so let's say you hunt on this side so you got your layout blinds here so you got four guys right there the lines or the blinds or whatever but you have a crosswind so the crosswind means it's coming the same way that it was in that first scenario but this way you're kind of sitting 90 degrees towards it so what you need to do is take your decoys and I like to run a line right along the bank here and then kind of build a wall and J it out so then you have that pocket once again so that one's kind of got two different pockets and if you want to this is this is like perfect right here this is how I would do it if that makes any sense whatsoever with my fourth grader childish drawings but that's kind of the basic scenario for a crosswind I'll simplify this even more for you if you're having a hard time picking up what I'm putting down essentially you have your wind coming from there what you were trying to do with your decoys is just build a wall you just want to build a wall and then basically channel them into the wall to where you have a kill pocket that is the simplest way to talk about a decoy spread you're basically just trying to make a pocket to where the birds will want to land they want to land within the decoys so you're channeling them in giving them open spots to land within the decoys and then you shoot them right there that's the simplest way I can I, I can do it for you let's go ahead and move on to let's say like a marsh or something it's basically the same way that you would do it with a um, a pond but let's say we, we've got a section of a marsh here and we're set up right here okay and the wind is kind of coming like that not quite at our backs but kind of at our backs so we can do either two things we can either angle ourselves so then we're parallel with the wind or stay where we are but then same thing I like to just run that simple horseshoe nothing special and get that kill pocket another option that you have would be to run some pods and by pods I mean you know you put a, a pair over here and you have like three right here and you have another pod right here and you have another one right here and a couple more back here so basically you're not making a defined shape but you're also just kind of leaving a pocket for them to land in so they're not like the horseshoe where they're just all kind of right here here up next to each other this one leaves kind of spaces between them and you can run pods between you know like two to seven or eight depending on how many decoys you have but that's just kind of a basic thing to do now for a lake let's say you're at a lake right and so here's the water here's the land and so the lake that I hunt most of the time if I'm gonna hunt a lake it's got like a, a pocket on this side so like a cove so we can hunt in different wind scenarios but not a lot of lakes have that so if you're just strictly on the bank the best thing I can tell you to do is hunt with days where the winds coming that way or just a little bit out of that way whether it's like a north or a south one preferably you're on the north side to where you can hunt a north wind or a northeast or a northwest. I mean, shoot, you could even hunt a west-west north wind or an east-east north wind or a east or west wind on that side. And then south side, you get the south winds. I kind of went took forever talking about the wind there, but the wind is very important. If you guys didn't know, you gotta keep the wind in mind. So north wind here. You're gonna run that horseshoe. You know, if it moves, move it a little bit. Or you can move it that way. 
basics of decoy spreads. I don't think you have to get too fancy with them. Well, I hope that kind of simplifies decoy spreads for you. I feel like I took forever talking about that, but there was a lot of information there. And so the biggest things that I can stress to you is don't overcomplicate it. You can run a U, you can run a V, you can run a J, you can run even a W. The W's work sometimes, it gives them two options to where there's, there's two pockets. I've ran that a couple of times, but most of the time, I'm just running a simple horseshoe, putting a lot of decoys right at the tip of the horseshoe and then kind of making them stretch out just kind of a little bit here and there. Don't overcomplicate it. Just leave them a pocket to land in. Keep the wind at your back or at your side. At your back is the best because the ducks will just cup right up in front of you and then you can shoot them. So if you notice that the birds aren't committing fully or something, the the birds just seem like they're flaring on something. First of all, check it to see if you're hidden. Check your blind, and if you have to, brush everything up some more, because I've done that where we, we've had hunts where the birds kept seeing us, kept seeing us, we're like, okay, let's take care of this now, let's spend 10, 15 minutes, go and brush up the blind, and then we did that and we killed birds the rest of the day. So take time to do that and if you're concealed really well it's probably your decoy spread so you can do two things one pull your mojo um a lot of people are really hesitant to do this but i'm i'm very i i'm like get that thing out get it out it's it's the mojo get it out which sometimes i'm right sometimes i'm wrong but i've killed plenty of ducks without a mojo and i pl killed plenty of ducks with a mojo so i'm pretty much indifferent towards them over water I mean, I would give them a thumbs down over water and a thumbs up over a field. So that's just kind of my opinion on them. But we'll talk about that more in a different video. The other thing to do is just simply adjust your decoys. Get them a little bit more spread out. Make your hole bigger. Make your hole a little smaller. Maybe change up the shape. Go from a U to like a W or maybe put more on one side, more towards the bank. Just don't overcomplicate it. Just see what the birds want to do. And that's the easiest thing I can tell you is just spread it out, move it, get those decoys out, make sure there's movement in the decoys because movement is key over water. If there's no movement, you're not going to kill any birds. Well, you're going to kill some birds, but you're going to have a heck of a lot more birds coming to your spread if there's movement. And if you want to know how to get movement into your spread, go over to my most important piece of duck hunting equipment video and check that out and you can learn how to put motion into your decoys. That's all I got. I'm gonna quit yapping. I have talked for like a long time. Follow me on my social media. I've got a Twitter and an Instagram and a Snapchat and a Facebook now. I don't know exactly what I'm doing with the Facebook. I just opened it up. So if you guys wanna message me on there, if, it's up, if that's more convenient for you, you have that. But Snapchat and Instagram are my two go-tos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tune in next week because we'll talk about another waterfowl hunting topic.